Revelation chapter 20. Now for 6,000 years of man, we've been under the ways of men, following the ways of men. For 1,000 years, we will follow the ways of God. And we really didn't have a choice with either under the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. However, there's a 43-year transitional period of time, Christian spiritual warfare. The last days are the end times of the ways of men to the ways of God. And so now that the second coming of the ways of God are back, we have a choice. We can now take upon us the yoke and burdens of Christ, which are easy to bear. Or we can take the yokes of men upon us that will destroy us. Now, Satan is ruling over the kingdoms of men. He does so by pretending to be God or lizard person or whatever it takes so that we don't believe Christ has all authority. And he convinces us that the ways of men are just as good as the ways of God. But the ways of men bring death, suffering, and insan insanity. He steals from us our peace. Revelation 6, verse 4. He's the second horseman of the apocalypse. Steals our peace. Now, what are the ways of men? What are they about? Again, we're under Satan's rule. Here's some, a couple of examples. And you might want to look these up if you, if you don't have them. Look at the overpopulation-project.com. It's the moral imperatives of depopulation. In other words, the ways of men are, let's get this world down to just 500 million people so we can have all the stuff for ourselves. The ways of men include the 2030 agenda. You might look that up. Sustainabledevelopment.un.org. The ways of men have 15 minute cities. The ways of men are to get rid of small communities. Again, depopulate the world. Climate change. Use climate change and pseudoscience of men to, to do this. But the ways of Christ bring every spiritual blessing. There is only one faith system from God. There's only one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one Bible that he will rule over his kingdom with for 1,000 years, divided into two ages, Ephesians 2, 7. Every knee is going to bow to Christ and not men at the second coming of the ways of God. Only he will be sanctified and glorified, Leviticus 10, 1 through 3, at his second coming in 43 years from now. Only he, along with the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, can bring salvation down from heaven, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. At the second coming of the ways of God, only Christ will be the mediator between God and man, 1 Timothy 2, 5. Now, under the ways of men, there are many men that are counted as righteous who are doing the best they can do in the circumstance. And God wanted us to do that. He wanted us to learn from the school of hard knocks that the ways of men don't work. And we say we will be saved by grace and not at all or despite the works of men. So it's not a trap set for us by God. He want, Because of free moral agency, he wants us to learn the difference between the ways of God and the ways of men. And so for the past 1,680 years, the Lord has hidden his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, and his Bible so that Satan, the second horseman of the apocalypse, the man of sin, while pretending to be God, can rule over the kingdoms of men with his mega sword of every wind of the doctrine of men. But the second coming of the ways of God are back. The subjective truth, Bibles, religions, preaching, and doctrine of men was necessary so men could fight against God. Otherwise, Christ could never have been murdered by men. Antichrist doctrine of men are necessary. And all doctrine of men is antichrist because it's not the doctrine of Christ. It's not the one true faith. You know, the words for denominationalism is, is heresy, or it's Gnosticism, or it's apostasy. Well, we've been in apostasy. The kingdoms of men are apostasy from the kingdom of God. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. But the apostasy was necessary for us to have spiritual warfare, for us to now be able to fight the good fight of faith against every wind of the doctrine of men. You notice 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 6 through 16, and it's all there. You know, we think, we thought we knew God, but we didn't. We knew Satan. We don't even know the minds of other men. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16. How, we, how do we think we can know the mind of God? But there in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16, we read that the wisdom of man was important, necessary, so that Christ could be crucified. This says it right there. We gave up the ways of God. First. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, we didn't love truth, and we gave up our first love like Ephesus did. Remember, we gave up the ways of God for the ways of men. 
we gave up agape love for phileo love. And we've been fighting, kicking against the prick. Not intentionally. We didn't really have a choice. We needed to learn that it hurts to kick against the pricks. And so I am Randall Maxwell, the watchman for the second coming of the ways of God. And I've been granted some wisdom from above so that I can see me in his trees, Mark 8, 24. So I can edit out some of the wiles of Satan out of the Bibles of men. My work exposes the world to how ignorant I am and how foolish I am. Who am I to be editing the Bible? The Bible's of men. I can't edit the Bible from God. It's, a, it's not a private interpretation. But I can edit the Bible's of men because the Lord has granted me wisdom from above to do so. Still, it shows my ignorance of all the mistakes I made. But the ignorance of man is an important part of the scheme of redemption. All men, through all times, have shown our need for the perfect Savior. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The ways of men have simply been to illustrate that we need the ways of God. Like all men, I get to show the world my ignorance. I get to show the world that Christ has all authority. That I'm poor in spirit. We are. We thought we knew God, but it was Satan pretending to be God. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of peace that Christ preached. We now have a choice. We follow after God or do we follow after men? Christ is the only mediator between God and men. It works. The ways men don't work. Mediators of men don't work. Preaching of men doesn't work. That's how Satan rules over the kingdom of men. With the subjective truth and pseudoscience ways of men. And so as a watchman, it's my job to grant you access to the to the first part of the second coming of the ways of God. And that is the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. That's the Bible in part. And so now we can start fighting the good fight of faith. When we have the sword of the Spirit, we can read the Lord's warnings himself. We can read the Lord's warnings for ourselves. That's what we're going to do as we look in Revelation chapter 20. The second coming of the Lord. I'm looking for believers locally who believe that Christ has all authority and who are like Saul at the first coming of the ways of God, recognizing that we've been kicking against the pricks and that we need to start obeying the Lord and start learning how to love and protect each other with agape love. The Lord's in control and he's going to determine when and if you understand the difference between the wisdom from above and the wisdom from below. First Corinthians chapter 2, 6 through 16, it's right there in plain sight, but only the Lord determines who can understand that. We've always had the Bible from God, but we didn't know how to interpret it. Only the Lord grants us wisdom from above to do so. But if you can tell the difference, if it's time for you, we need to find a place together where we can start prepping for the second coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. I'm looking for believers locally first. Love to find some people around it. Are we going to start talking about these things and how to prep there's going to be a, a famine coming men are going to ensure that the ways of men are going to ensure that we're going to be fighting against the doctrine of men every wind of the doctrine of men not against flesh and blood but also i'd be and it's my job by the way as a watchman to give to you the lord's warnings to give you access to the lord's warnings about the second coming of the ways of god i'll be glad to meet with those in surrounding towns as well to talk about prepping those further away, we can talk on Skype about how you can start loving one another in your own communities. We can fight the good fight of faith. Part of that is going to involve us learning how to love with the God we love and take care of each other. We're going to need each other. We're going to need to be to have each other's backs with the God we love in the coming years. So we fight the good fight of faith. In about 43 years, the second age of the greatest story ever told is going to save us. When the kingdom comes, the great wedding feast, we're going to be freed from every wind of the doctrine of men. Revelation chapter 20. And I saw the savage beast, now Satan, the demon, it's the spirit of dead evil man. He possesses, he possessed Nero or Domitian and other people in the first century, of course. He's doing the same thing today. That's how he rules over the kingdoms of men, pretending to be God, whispering in our ears that we can be like God. And so Satan possessed the bodies of leaders in Jerusalem in the first century. He also possessed the bodies of popes and other leaders cl claiming to be God. Considered a Christian crusades with the Catholics and Protestants murdering hundreds of thousands of Anabaptists. 
to preserve their Bibles, which allows the abuse of children. You know, that compares to the Caesars in the first century. Again, if you want to know about the doctrine of men, I suggest you look up overpopulation-project.com. The moral imperatives of depopulation. Look under the sustainable development.un.org. Agenda 2030 and how men are going to destroy the world if they can. Basically by 2030. That's what Agenda 2030 is. Let's get this population of the world down. But in the last days or end times of the kingdoms of men, we have 43 years of Christian spiritual warfare where Satan knows he has but a short time. It could be while he and other demon spirits of dead evil men indwell the Pope or other world leaders pretending to be God. So the same thing's happening today that happened in the first century at the first coming of the ways of God. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to make war against him that sat upon the horse and against his army. And the savage beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. In the first century, the concilia of the religions of Caesar. Domitian claimed to be the resurrected Nero in order to compete against the resurrection of Christ. The savage beast was taken with him, the false prophet, that wrought the signs in his sight, wherewith he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. We generally associate that with 666 on the forehead or on the arm of those identified as Romans. You know, it's no coincidence that the Bible's a man. And that's how Satan rules over the kingdom of the men. He says the ways of men are just as good as the ways of God. There's no power in the Bible's of men, subjective truth and pseudoscience of men. And it's no coincidence that the Bible's of men have 66 books. You know, there's 39 books in the Old Testament Bible's of men. It was whittled down. It was whittled up. It used to have 24 by the Bible from God has 24 sections in the Old Testament. But the Bibles of men, they wanted to include the Apocrypha books. It was necessary to have the Apocrypha books in the Bibles of men so that men would have the authority to edit Bibles of men. And so men put the Apocrypha books in the Bible. And because Apocrypha books were smaller, they, they needed to make the Bible match it better. So they divided up books in the Old Testament. Divided up sections in the Old Testament where they had 39 instead of 24. So you had 66 books in the Bible's men. They too were cast alive into the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Even the sword. So Christ comes bearing the sword in the time of warfare. In these last days. The sword of the Spirit. Remember Matthew 10, 34. He, he didn't come to bring peace at first. Not now. Not yet. Peace is going to come in 43 years, but he's bringing a sword. We're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. We're going to choose the ways of men, or we're going to choose the ways of God. The Bible from God, the sword of the Spirit, or the mega sword of Satan. Every wind of the doctrine of men. Revelation 6, 4. I think I'm going to choose the Lord. The sword of the Spirit, which came forth out of his mouth, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. You know, part of the fight of faith is limited commission where we take the sword of spirit that's the bible in part to the world and so the sword of the spirit and the holy spirit in, in the last chapter in revelation 19 talks about the, the holy spirit inviting the birds of the air to fill their mouths with the flesh in other words be a part of the great wedding feast come to the great wedding feast be a christian the gospel of peace taken to the entire world the birds were filled with their flesh all evil is going to burn be burned up on this earth Maybe you could say it fer it'll, their flesh will fertilize the goodness of the world that will be left, the new heaven and new earth that's going to continue for 720 years approximately in the kingdom of God after the great wedding feast comes. We've got 43 years of Christian spiritual warfare. Part of that's going to be in Christianity. And then Christianity is going to continue for 720 years in the kingdom of heaven or the great wedding feast. And more about this as we as we read how the kingdom is divided between the living and the dead. And he laid hold on the serpent, the old snake, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Okay, Satan's been bound for a thousand years. No, not yet. Remember, one day to the Lord is as a thousand of men. So the Lord's day, the Lord's Sabbath, the kingdom, the great and terrible day of the Lord lasts for a thousand years, but lasts for one day in God's the way that God accounts time 
But for men, it's a thousand years divided into two ages. So yes, Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years. But he's not bound now. We are in the kingdom of Satan right now. He's been loose. Lay hold the serpent, the old snake, which is the devil and Satan, and bind him for a thousand years, divided into two ages, Ephesians 2, 7. So the kingdom of God was interrupted by the apostasy for the last 1,680 years, 2 Thessalonians 2, 11. And so Satan's going to rule in these last days, these end times, 43 years of warfare. It's a transition period between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. So during the apostasy, Satan rules over the kingdoms of men with his megasaur. So he's ruling right now. But in 43 years, Christ will resume his reign of the kingdom of heaven. And cast him, that is, <clears throat> and cast Satan back into the deep pit. So Satan's going to be cast back into the deep pit in 43 years. And he shut it and sealed it over him, that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be finished. After he was sealed up the first time, he must be loosed for a little time. So that's what we've been in, the apostasy. He's been loosed. 1680 years and i saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them is that christians and i saw the souls of them that had been beheaded for the testimony of jesus and the word of theo again we're not fighting against flesh and blood we're fighting against the doc every wind of the doctrine of men however there's going to be some of us who die we're not to be concerned about that if we die there is going to be retribution brought upon evil men by the Lord. So I saw the souls of them that had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of Theos. So as we take the gospel to the world, the sword of the spirit to the world, there's going to be some occasions. By the way, I think we have three years to get started without as much retribution because it seems as if the first three years pre-Christianity, it's not going to be as bad as it starts in the first the the third woe is about the three years of pre-Christianity, as we read in the book of Revelation. And so perhaps we have three years to take the gospel to the world. And such as worship not the beast, neither his image, and receive not the mark on their forehead and upon their hand. And they lived and reigned with Christ the thousand years. And so men have died in service to Christ, first coming of the Lord, ways of the Lord. And they... You know, the dead in Christ rise first into the kingdom in heaven, first resurrection. And so in the first century, Christians died and they sent into heaven. Now the evil, of course, at the first resurrection, the evil remained in the Hadean realm, but those in Christ raised to the, the new wedding feast. Now I suppose the wedding feast has been, has been uh, postponed now until 43 years when it picks up and resumes because there's only going to be a thousand years of the great wedding feast and the rest of the dead did not live until the thousand years should be finished the evil dead and so we're going to enter into the great wedding feast whether we're alive or whether we're dead but now evil men are going to remain in the Hadean realm until the thousand years are finished about 760 years from now this is the first resurrection Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power. So, of course, once we die, if we die and before 43 years, we're going we're gonna to go in the kingdom of heaven at the same time as a little bit before, just immediately before those who are alive enter into the kingdom on this earth. However, if we've died and entered into the kingdom, of course, the second death has no power. We, we're already immune to that. We got over the first death, and there's not going to be a second death for us. We made it. We'll be priests with, of God and Christ, and we'll reign with him a thousand years in heaven. What does that mean? In the first resurrection, those who died in Christ, those who entered into the kingdom, they're going to remain in the kingdom for the whole thousand years. So we're not, we are not going to go into the kingdom of heaven and reign for a thousand years. There's only, what, maybe 720 years left for us. So when we make it, if we make it, we are going to reign with him. The first part of this is going to reign with him for about 720 years.